CA Gold connector installation on AGW Gold cable. First we're going to remove two and a half inches of the protective overbraid. Start by cutting a couple strands of the protective overbraid, being careful not to nick or cut any of the braid wire underneath. Then balloon out the protective overbraid and cut the rest of the strands. Now taking a small piece of electrical tape, tape down the protective overbraid to keep it from unraveling. Next, take our stainless steel tube sanding tool and slide it on the cable between the braid wire and the spacer material. Work it in approximately three inches. Then taking your fine grit emery paper starting about an inch from the end of the braid wire, sanding all the way around the circumference of the cable, abraid the braid wire. You have to abrade all the strands in order to get a good electrical connection because each strand is coated in a plastic type material. Do not over sand because then you could damage the braid wire. Next we're going to remove one and a quarter inch of the braid wire. Cut a couple strands being careful not to nick the center conductor. Balloon out the braid wire and then cut the rest of the strands. Be careful not to nick the red insulating material on the center conductor. Now we're going to slide the braid wire back two inches and we're going to remove one and seven eighths of the Teflon spiral spacer material. Unwind the spacer and remove it. Be careful not to nick the thin Teflon insulating material on the center conductor. Now slide your braid wire back towards the end of the cable. Next we're going to remove about three quarters of an inch of the thin insulating material from the center conductor. Then we will slide on our coupling ring, making sure that we put the shoulder part of the coupling ring onto the cable first. Then we'll slide on our outer crimp furl or shield furl. You can either crimp or solder the center conductor. In this video we're going to crimp it. To do that we're going to slide on a wire furl onto the center conductor. Slide it down until it just touches the red insulating material of the center conductor. If you want to solder the center conductor do not use the wire furl and refer to the soldering techniques described in the JMPU connector video. Next, using the center conductor, flare the braid wire. Make sure that the braid wire is evenly distributed around the center conductor. That will make assembly much easier. Now we're going to slide on the plug body. Slide on the plug body so that the back part of the crimp area just is underneath the braid wire. Then slide up your crimp furl so that it just slaps the back part of the connector. Then push the plug body into the crimp furl until the back shoulder of the plug body is snug to the crimp furl. Now we're going to check to see that we have 3 eighths of the wire furl sticking out of the pin. That's not counting the wire sticking out of the end of the wire furl, just the wire furl. In this case we only have a quarter inch, so we'll need to remove more of the shield wire. Slide the plug out of the crimp furl, slide your crimp furl back, and remove about another eighth inch of your braid wire. Again, being careful not to nick the thin red insulating material on the center conductor. Now we'll go back to the flaring procedure. Again, using your center conductor, we're going to flare the braid wire, making sure it's evenly distributed around the center conductor. Then slide on the plug body 
until the backside just gets under the braid wire. Then slide up our crimp furl so that it just laps the back part of the connector. And then push our connector into the crimp furl until it's snug to the back shoulder of the plug. Now we'll check again that we have 3 eighths of the wire furl sticking out past the end of the pin, and we do. The reason we make sure that 3 eighths of an inch of the wire furl is sticking out past the end of the pin is to make sure that part of the insulating material of the center conductor gets up into the pin. Next we're going to crimp the outer crimp furl using a .255 hexagonal crimp with a cycling crimp tool. A cycling crimp tool means that you have to go through your complete cycle before you've completed your crimp. Make sure that your crimp furl stays snug to the back shoulder of your plug body through the crimping process. Now, take your crimp tool, making sure that the crimp tool is resting against the back shoulder of your plug and cycle the crimp tool. Next, we're going to crimp the center conductor to the center pin using a .100 hexagonal crimp. The center conductor pin has two diameters, a small diameter and a large diameter area. We're going to be crimping on the small diameter area right where it transitions to the large diameter area. Apply the crimp tool, run it through its cycle, and complete the crimp. Next, we're going to trim the center conductor and wire furl. We want to leave about a sixteenth of an inch of the wire furl and wire sticking past the end of the pin when we trim it. If we were doing a solder connection, we would cut it flush to the end of the pin. Next, we want to thread up our coupling ring and thread it onto the plug body. The final step for all connectors is to run the cable and connector testing procedure in Section 7 of the PAL-AT installation manual.